Now we move on to the fourth testing apparatus, which is buckling of strut. As what you can see here, this is the apparatus of buckling of strut. For this apparatus, what you can see, it has the loop cell, digital force display, and the close hit here. As what you can see as well, for this testing, you need to determine the critical killer buckling load. In mechanics of material cost, you already learned in chapter 7 about the compression members. In this chapter, you will learn about the Euler equations. In the Euler equation, the parameter consists in this equation are the modulus of elasticity, the moment of initial, and also the length of your compression member. As what you can see from this apparatus, it shows clearly about the end restraint effect. For the compression member with the pin pin ended, the Euler equation it is equally to pi squared ai over l squared. Meanwhile, for the fixed pin, the Euler buckling load can be determined by using this equation, 2 pi squared ai over l squared. Meanwhile, for the fixed ended restraint condition, the equation for the Euler buckling load it is equal to pi squared multiplied by 4 ei over l squared. For this experiment, we will try to apply all the end restraint condition. Meaning that for this testing, we will use one of the samples. As what you can see here, we have four types of sample. The first sample, it is equal to 370 mm. Second one is 420 mm. The third one is 470 mm. And the fourth one is 520 mm. For our exercise, we will use 470 mm of this sample. This sample, it is made by the aluminum. Meaning that you need to know what is the modulus of elasticity for this material. For the compression member, we will try to test with different and the strain condition. The first one is spin pin. The second one is fixed pin. And the third one is fixed fix. We will place this sample to this apparatus and try to identify the maximum buckling load that can be applied to this strut. In the lab instruction, you need to choose three samples at least in order to know the maximum buckling load. Please consult with your respective lecturer later about the number or specimen that is going to be used for your laboratory. However, for this exercise, I will show you only one sample of 450mm of length in order to test for 3 end condition pin pin, fix pin, and fix fix. Let's move on for the first end restraint condition. As, as what you can see here, we need to change the end restraint condition by fixing the, the platen here. So now we move on with the pin ended condition. How? I will change this end restraint condition like this. Then what should you do? You need to loose up all the bolt here. Move the cross head. 
then place your sample. Once you already place your samples, tie it up. So now, this will represent the pin ended condition. Once this testing setup has been done, you need to make sure that the digital force display will become to zero. Adjusting this button so that it becomes zero. So now, this is zero, meaning that no forces it is applied to this track. In order to apply the force, you need to tie this bow. When you tie it, you may see that your members now starting to buckle. And then in terms of the force, it is increasing. Put your force to the maximum. So as what you can see here, if I put to the maximum force, the display here it is not moved. At this stage, it show you that this is the maximum critical buckling load that can be applied to these compression members. Another characteristic of pin ended condition you may see the angle of rotation at the top and restraint and at the bottom and restraint with the angle of rotation. So you may see the angle of rotation located here. Same as well at the end restraint at the bottom part. So this is the angle of rotation. It rotates from the bottom to the top with a certain angle of rotation. This is the characteristic for a pin support. 